Lu Wuji rushes through the mountains to save his disciple, who has been kidnapped. He sees his disciples chained on a pillar. Lu Wuji gets furious and kills everyone in his way. His disciple calls out to him. He gets near triggering a trap. His disciple laughs as he falls. His disciple asks him to pass on his legacy to her. She laughs at him for falling into a trap. She wants him to hand over the emperor's scripture to her. Lu Wuji realizes that she was just tricking him. He resists and breaks free of the trap. An attack from behind comes and weakens him. Two more acquaintances have also betrayed him. He coughs up blood and kneels. His disciple is happy to see her helpless master. Because he is not handing over the emperor's scripture, she plans to torture him to death. Liu Wuji laughs and covers himself with the hidden protection of the emperor's scripture. He gathers his remaining strength and uses a self-destruction technique, blowing up everything in the world. Later, Liu Wuji opens his eyes and wonders why he is alive. He realizes that he was reincarnated. He lost his cultivation, but he still got the emperor's scripture. He returns to Earth while he is still 20 years old. He plans out his next actions to increase his cultivation, find godly seeds, and rule over Earth. He looks forward to seeing his disciple again. Lu Chen got a call from his girlfriend, Zhang Xiaomen, and she told him that he'd be fetched to the station. Lu Chen remembers that he has a debt to settle with her. He looked to his side and laughed. Yi Xuan gets mad and asks what's wrong with the painting they have. The Yi Zhengxin asks Yi Xuang not to be rude and asks Lu Chen if he noticed anything. He claims that it is fake. Yi Zhengxin tells him that experts have checked the painting, but Lu Chen still claims that it is fake. Yi Xuang gets mad and punches him, but he blocks with tea fortification. Yi Zhengxin tells Yi Xuang to stand down and apologizes to Lu Chen. Anyone who can use key fortification is respected as a grandmaster. If they insult Lu Chen further, it will take a second to kill them. He reprimanded his granddaughter, and she apologized to Lu Chen. Yi Zhengxin then respectfully talks to Lu Chen and asks him to show proof that the painting is fake. Lu Chen rips three pieces from it and asks the two, what is the difference between the ink marks of the three? They see nothing. Lu Chen then describes it, and Yi Zhengxin realizes that it was printed with an ancient printer. Yi Zhengxin asks a subordinate to take away the painting, and he recognizes Lu Chen's skills. Lu Chen notices the box, and Yi Zhengxin is willing to give it to him. He notices that Yi Zhengxin is buttering him up. Lu Chen accepts it, but he mentions that he doesn't want to be in debt to others. The old man asks him to take his granddaughter as his disciple. Yi Xuang shouts and Lu Chen notices her resemblance to the disciple who betrayed him. Lu Chen strongly rejects Yi Zhengxin's request. Yi Zhengxin implies that Lu Chen promised. He then asks her to call him teacher instead of master. Yi Xuan greets her teacher, and Lu Chen kind of regrets it. The train arrives at the station, and the two remind him to get in touch with them. Yi Xuan asks her grandfather why he is acting like that in front of Lu Chen, despite having a high status. He tells her that they are building connections. He reminds her about Lin Holong, a man who wiped out an entire group of armed forces, and is renowned as the Grandmaster of Martial Arts. He claims that Lu Chen's strength is superior to Lin Hulong's. He orders her to win his favor. Lu Chen arrives on the streets of Tongzhao and recalls a bitter memory of the past. He meets up with Xiaomen and her mother. She asks him to greet her mother. They get in the car, and Xiaomen notices something has changed with Lu Chen. While driving, Xiaomen's mom dreams of retiring in Tianqin Bay. She continues to talk about riches on purpose while looking at Lu Chen. Xiaomen receives a call but declines it, showing it is from another man. Lu Chen greets Xiaomen's father and Xiaomen's mother angrily tells him to prepare the food. She badmouths both her husband and Lu Chen, implying that he is not that great for Xiaomen. Just then, the doorbell rang, and Chen Chao came to ask Xiaomen out. She tries to drive him away, but her mother notices him. He gives Xiaomen's mother with luxury. Chen Chao then notices Lu Chen exuding a strong aura. Xiaomen's mother introduces him as a jobless country boy. Chen Chao tries to introduce himself to Lu Chen, but he gets ignored. He offers Lu Chen to work in his company and Xiaomen's mother acts proud of it, making Lu Chen feels little. Lu Chen just smiles and lets out a technique that went to attach to Chen Chao's back. Xiaomen explains to Lu Chen that there is nothing between her and Chen Chao. She noticed that it was not the usual Lu Chen. She cries and tells him about Chen Chao's richness. She mentions that Lu Chen should also be able to buy a house. She mentions Lu Chen's father and a factory. She entices him to use it for a mortgage loan. 
Lu Chen recalls the time when he got the loan money, and Xiaomin betrays him in the future. Inside the house, Xiaomin's mother and Chen Chao talk badly about Lu Chen. Chen Chao suddenly felt something wrong in his stomach while Mrs. Zhang was flexing her perfumes. Chen Chao farted a bomb, and Mrs. Zhang puked and fainted. Xiaomin notices the noise and discovers a smelly Chen Chao. Lu Chen looked down at him and made him slip. Chen Chao runs away and Lu Chen claims that it is just the start. Later, Xiaomin still tries to coerce him. Lu Chen goes out, reading a message from his disciple. That night, Yi Shuang fetches him in a sports car. They arrive at a high-class hotel, and she gives Lu Chen his room card, car key, and a contract. The contract shows that he will get stock ownership and a company. Her grandfather offers these as her learning fees. Lu Chen notices that the company is Sin Omen's workplace. He accepts it and Yi Shuang scrams away. As he is going to enter his room, he hears voices inside. He busts open the door and sees a man assaulting a girl. The man confronts Lu Chen, but he ignores him and Lu Chen sits on the chair. The man warns him he will beat him up and the girl signals Lu Chen to go out. Lu Chen smokes, enraging the man who grabbed the bottle. The girl stops the man but gets from his side. Lu Chen grabs his neck and lifts him. The man warns him once more, but Lu Chen looked ominous. Lu Chen burns the man to nothing, and he immediately dissipates the fire. Later, the girl wakes up in the bathtub, and Lu Chen tells him to shut up. Lu Chen explains to her that she got drugged and she has 15 minutes to go out. The girl finishes her bath and wonders how Lu Chen beat the man. Lu Chen exclaims that she went over time. She doesn't have clothes and is worried that Lu Chen will kick out a beauty like her. She asks to borrow his phone, and Lu Chen tells her to stay in the guest room and throws his phone at her. She is somehow attracted to Lu Chen, except for his attitude. Lu Chen unpacks his things and confirms that there are seeds in the box. These seeds are soul imprints of fallen ancient gods and can awaken a person to the divine realm stage. If properly refined, it can give you heaven's eye, which can see through anything. The emperor's scripture is not enough, and he needs the seeds to reawaken his cultivation. Just then, the girl enters the room, acting scared, and asks to change rooms with him. Lu Chen sees through her acts. She has left herself no other choice but to seduce him. The girl creeps closer to Lu Chen, and as a guy he reacts. Lu Chen is frustrated with how troublesome a mortal's body is. The girl acts strong, and Lu Chen gives up. She thought Lu Chen would sleep in the other room but he returns with a hairdryer. He tells her to dry her hair and immediately goes to sleep. This was not the girl's expected outcome, and Lu Chen is seen blushing. Morning comes and the girl is gone. Lu Chen discovers her notes with her contact and finds them interesting. Lu Chen sees the contract and decides to go to Tongzhao Media. Lu Chen signs the papers, and he is officially the president of the company now. Xiao Wen calls him not to be late for the job she recommended to him. Lu Chen tells her that they'll be there. Her colleague asks if her boyfriend is rich, but another colleague, Singson, describes Lu Chen as a poor country bumpkin. As Xiaomin feels embarrassed, Lu Chen appears. Xiaomin's colleagues criticize Lu Chen's appearance. Just then, their department manager appears, rags about his accomplishments, and announces that he will treat everyone equally. Zhang Hai introduces himself and acts hostile toward him. To embarrass Lu Chen, Zhang Hai gives him the difficult task of closing a deal with a demanding client by finding a celebrity for them. Lu Chen thinks it is a good way to earn some pocket money. Lu Chen tells them to leave it to him. They talk and look at him with doubt, and Zhang Hai tells him to bring candidates before lunch. But Lu Chen tells him that he can call the celebrity to come now. Everyone laughs at Lu Chen, and it embarrasses Xiaomin. Lu Chen calls someone, and Xiaomin flips out at him and walks away. Zhang Hai went outside and chatted with a guard about Luo Chen. Zhang Hai laughs at Luo Chen. Just then, a car arrives, and a familiar figure is driving it. It is Lan Buyer. Back in the office, Sin Omen scolds Lu Chen for ruining her reputation. Downstairs, people freak out upon seeing Lan Buyer. Zhang Hai and Singson are sweating hard and think that it is just a coincidence. Lan Buyer enters the office and immediately approaches Luo Chen. Xiaomin is surprised. Lu Chen asks her to go through the contract. Lan Buyer sees this as an opportunity to get closer to him. Lan Buyer starts flirting with him, making Xiaomin surprised. Lan Buyer accepts the endorsement, and Lu Chen asks for the price. She asks Lu Chen to have a meal with her instead. After that, Lan Buyer drives away, 
swearing that Lu Chen will be hers. Different employees now want to be part of Lu Chen's project. Zhang Hai can't believe what just happened, and he starts to think of ways to get revenge on Lu Chen. That night, Zhang Hai invited everyone to a fancy dinner. Zhang Hai's acquaintance, Wang Kai, comes and Zhang Hai asks him to take care of Lu Chen. Wang Kai approaches him, and Lu Chen acts like he doesn't know him. During dinner, Xiaomen asks Lu Chen how he got to know Lan Buyer, but Lu Chen refuses to tell her. Meanwhile, Zhang Hai and Wang Kai plan something. They later went to the casino, and they showed how they had money to bet. They embarrass Lu Chen in front of Xiaomen. Lu Chen warns Xiaomen, but she just goes away. Xiaomen plays and keeps getting jackpots. Other employees warn him about Lao Li playing with Xiaomen and the others. They let you win to bait you. After some time, they kept losing to the experienced gambler. Wang Kai creates a ruckus, and security led by Dao chases him away. Wang Kai is beaten down by Dao. Dao claims that this place is the only uncorrupt casino in Tongzhou. Dao tells them to win back what they lost, and he will lend them money with 300% interest. The others are scared of Dao's coercion, but Lu Chen asked him for 100,000 yuan. Xiaomen and the others are worried, but Lu Chen assures them that he'll win all the money back. The game starts, and Lu Chen immediately bets all in without looking at the cards. Bio and the gambler laugh, but Lu Chen wins the game. They played a few more rounds, and Lu Chen was able to win everything back. Dao is surprised at what is happening. Suddenly, Hong Bio appears. Hong Bio is known as Tong Zhu's underground boss. Except Lu Chen, he issues the order to clear the area. Tong Zhu media employees are chased out and wish Lu Chen luck. Hong Bio asks Lu Chen about his card skills. He asks Lu Chen to join him as his underling or leave his hands. No one, says Lu Chen, can tell him what to do. Hong Bio orders Dao to attack Lu Chen, but Lu Chen instantly moves behind him and sends Dao flying. Hong Bio orders the others to attack altogether. Hong Bio tries to call someone but later notices that he is the only one left. The call connects and Lu Chen tells him to take his time. In another place, Yi Shuang is on the call. She orders everyone to see Hong Bio. Hong Bio warns Lu Chen that he will be defeated. While waiting, Lu Chen suggests torturing him. Yi Shuang's group arrives and discovers the scattered bodies and a bloody Hong Bio. Yi Shuang is surprised to see her master. Hong Bio tattles on Lu Chen, but Yi Shuang slaps Hong Bio. She apologizes to Lu Chen. She also explains that Lu Chen is the honored guest of the Yi family. Hong Bio kneels and apologizes. Lu Chen asks her to take care of this matter and leaves. His disciple chases after him and gives him an invitation to Tongzhu's auction. She informs him that the auction is where they got the wooden box before. Lu Chen realizes their intentions. Hong Bio discusses this with his henchman and decides to present a gift to Lu Chen. Lu Chen arrives at the auction. An ugly man tries to talk to him, but Lu Chen ignores him. Chen Chao arrives and tells him not to be a snob. Lu Chen recites a line from a poem. The two call Lu Chen crazy but a woman translates it for them and laughs. The ugly man screams, and a manager comes. The manager asks Lu Chen to show his invitation. He shows one, but the ugly man accuses him of stealing it, and Chen Chou claims Lu Chen is acting like a big shot when he is not. The manager favors the two idiots, and he asks Lu Chen to leave. Just then, Yi Chengxin arrives and asks why his guest is being chased away. The manager gets shocked to see that Yi Chengxin just addressed Lu Chen with honorifics. Meanwhile, Chen Chao and his friend Shil and Chen Chao's dad warns them not to cause trouble with Yi Zhengxin's guest. Just then, security comes, and the three are kicked out. Chen Chao's dad smacks him and asks who he offended. He only remembers Lu Chen but claims that it is impossible. Meanwhile, the auction continues and Yi Zhengxin tells him to wait for his close friend. Just then, his friend arrives, and Yi Zhengxin introduces Lu Chen as an excellent appraiser. Yi Shengxin's friend looks offended that someone so young claims to be an appraiser. Just then, an ancient bronze sword appears in the auction, and Yi Shengxin's friend suggests bidding for it. Lu Chen claims that there is something wrong with it. Yi Shengxin's friend claims that Lu Chen doesn't know anything, but Lu Chen insists that the sword is fake. Yi Shengxin's friend rages as Yi Shuang finds the situation familiar. Lu Chen suggests winning the bid so they can check the item afterward. Yi Zhengxin's friend claims he is the best appraiser in Tongzhou. 
They won the bid, and Yi Zhengxin's friend starts talking about his achievements and credentials as an appraiser. Just then, a certificate comes and shows that the item was fake. Yi Xuang then tells him that she did an investigation, and he puts up fake items to make Yi Zhengxin buy them. Yi Zhengxin's friend apologizes, but Yi Zhengxin orders his men to take him away. Yi Zhengxin concludes that he can only trust Liu Chen now. Just then, Peng Lan won a piece of land, gets auctioned. Yi Xuan claims that the price dropped because of the strange deaths there. No one bids for it, but Lu Chen suddenly bids a million for it. He wins the bid and Yi Xuan and Yi Zhangxin worry. Lu Chen leaves a black card and asks Yi Xuan to sign the deal in his stead later. She asks where he is going and Lu Chen claims to go to Panglongwen. He later arrives at Panglongwen and notices the evil spirits gathering in the area. He walks into a construction site and discovers that it is built to gather and trap spirits. Just then, a woman approaches him and warns him not to get near the building. Lu Chen notices that she is an earthbound spirit. She claims that her son worked on the site before, and she gives Lu Chen a blueprint, then disappears. He enters and discovers the ominous spirit gathering array. He tries to destroy it. However, police officers arrive. They tell Lu Chen to put his hands up, but he just ignores them. Just then, a male officer fires a warning shot. Lu Chen thinks clashing with law enforcement is not a good choice, so he surrenders and claims to be a paranormal lover. The male officer accuses him of being the suspect in the recent killings. The woman tells him not to jump to conclusions, and the woman introduces herself as Xu Jingjing. She requests to investigate Lu Chen, but he tries to tease her. They walk down to return to their station, but they return to the building. Lu Chen claims that they will never get out and talks about the area's Feng Shui. The woman criticizes him for spouting nonsense, night falls, and they still can't get out of the area. Lu knows that evil spirits will appear, so he asks Jingjing Jing to unlock the handcuffs. Just then, a taxi appears. The driver tells them to get in, but Lu Chen tells Jingjing Jing not to unless she wants to die. The male officer gets in and notices that the driver is the recent victim who just died. Jingjing Jing calls Lu Chen crazy, and just then, they hear the male officer screaming. The taxi driver creeps out of the car and tries to beat the male officer. Jingjing Jing arrives and discovers the taxi driver. Just then, the other male officer attacks Jingjing. Jing. Lu Chen breaks off his handcuffs, and the earthbound spirit from before appears. She asks to save the officers, but Lu Chen declines. The woman insists, but Lu Chen doesn't want to do anything at all. Just then, Lu Chen senses something ominous from behind. Meanwhile, Jingjing Jing dodges the other officer's attack. She then shoots the taxi driver. She tries to help the other officer get up, but Jingjing Jing gets pushed away by the scared male officer. He runs off and leaves Jingjing Jing cornered by the evil spirits. She shoots the evil spirit, but nothing happens. Just as she was going to get killed, the evil spirit got attacked from behind, and it dispersed. Lu Chen gives the other evil spirit three seconds, and he also kills it. He asks Jingjing Jing to follow, but she sprains her ankle. Lu Chen then carries her. By the way, Jingjing Jing asks how they can get out. In a flashback, the earthbound spirit woman tells Lu Chen that once the three officers are killed, the demon king will awaken. Lu Chen claims he can't fight with his incomplete array. The woman then tells him that there is a suppressed dragon's vein underneath the site. Back to the present, Lu Chen finds a shack and tells Jingjing Jing that they won't be getting out tonight. Just then, a red light appears. Lu Chen notices it and tells Jingjing Jing to stay. Jingjing Jing can't believe that supernatural forces are real. She asks where Lu Chen is going. Lu Chen claims to have saved her colleague. She cutely asks if Lu Chen will be back sooner, but he goes out in silence. Lu Chen needs to do something quickly, as the ritual just needs one more sacrifice. He kills demons on the way and hopes that he'll make it in time. Meanwhile, the other officer discovers a sealed pillar, and an evil spirit creeps up on him. Jingjing Jing receives a call from her angry father. She is given 30 minutes to go home, or he will fetch her in Pan Long One. She tries to warn him, but her father drops the call. She panics and tries to open the door. Just then, someone appears. The earthbound spirit woman blocks the door. The spirit is surprised that Jingjing Jing can see her now. Just then, Jingjing Jing recognizes her. Meanwhile, the police officer is being chased by evil spirits. He tries to fight back, and the spirit disappears. He thinks that he got stronger but it was actually Lu Chen who killed the spirit. He kills the rest and discovers the sealed pillar. He then tries to destroy it and use it as nourishment to awaken the godly seeds. 
Just then, police officers searched through the woods of Pan Longwen. An evil spirit attacks one of them, and the evil array gets activated. An entity attacks Lu Chen from behind. A week ago, Qingjing encountered a woman who asked the police to investigate his missing son in Pan Longwen. Days later, she found out that the woman had also died in Pan Longwen. She swears to investigate the Pan Longwen case thoroughly. Meanwhile, Lu Chen blocks the attack, and the male officer worries. They see a demon king coming out of the seal. It attacks Lu Chen, and Lu Chen defends, but he is overpowered. Just then, Lu Chen claims to test the new powers he just gained through awakening. He activates his power, and the demon king attacks him. Lu Chen fights back, and the demon king denies that it should not be this easy to awaken. The demon king tries to attack with a different move, but Lu Chen sends him flying. Lu Chen proved enough that he has awakened. Lu Chen attacked the demon king, but it was only a shadow puppet. The demon king escapes outside and consumes the souls of the patrolling police officers. Meanwhile, the spirit woman tells Jingjing not to be afraid. Jingjing apologizes, but the spirit woman says it is fine. The spirit woman tries to say the mastermind's name, but then a police officer screams for help outside. The police officer recognizes Jingjing and the spirit woman approves of letting him in. Just then, the Demon King appears and thanks them for opening the door. The Demon King grabs Jingjing. The Demon King notices a barrier and realizes that Lu Chen is protecting Jingjing. Jingjing kicks the Demon King and tries to escape. She gets captured immediately, and the Demon King attacks her. Just then, the Spirit Woman blocks the attack. Flashbacks show the woman's son arguing with her about things related to money. He mocked her job related to Feng Sui and curses. The son worked on the construction at the Pan Longwen site and received a call telling him that his mother is sick. He tried to leave, but he fell off the cliff. He woke up writhing in pain and wished to continue living for his mother. Just then, he got swallowed by an ominous aura. The flashback ends, and it turns out that the son is used by the demon as a vessel. The son's consciousness argues with the demon king and blames him for killing his mother. He talks about gaining freedom after the construction of the building is over but the Demon King blames Lu Chen for this situation. The Demon King redirects the son's hatred toward Lu Chen. The Demon King goes berserk and attacks Lu Chen. Lu Chen is happy to see a new punching bag for new power. He then fires an attack, and the Demon King rides in pain. The Demon King's breath slowly fades away, and the son asks Lu Chen to kill him now. Just then, the spirit woman appears and surprises her son. Lu Chen gathered her spirit one last time. The two talk about forgiving each other, and the spirit woman fades away. Lu Chen now tells him to make a decision. The son releases the energies he gathered, but that would make him lose his life. The son thanks Lu Chen for letting him see his mother again. He informs Lu Chen that he feels strange powers awakening in this world. He wishes Lu Chen to take care. The next morning, Lu Chen receives a call while meditating. Land buyer invites him for dinner in Tianyaju, and Lu Chen agrees. Her manager appears and overhears her. Bayer tells her that she confessed the other day and worries that she'll get rejected. The manager shouts that no one will reject the national goddess, but Bayer claims that Lu Chen is different. She cutely expresses her feelings, and her manager teases her. Meanwhile, Lu Chen fully absorbs the godly seeds. He turns his hair and eyes back to normal and goes out. Meanwhile, at Tongzhou Media, the employees worry that there are gangsters outside. Zhang Hai worries that Lu Chen offended Hong Biao. Sin Sin worries that Sin Omen will be targeted because she is Lu Chen's girlfriend. Just then, Sin Omen calls Lu Chen and invites him for dinner. He declines, but Sin Omen insists because she is going to tell him something. She asks to meet in Tian Yeju and drops the call. He laughs at the coincidence and continues to drive. Meanwhile, Jing Jing still can't believe what happened last night. She notices that she has some dark spots on her body. At Chen Yeju, Lu Chen comes, and Sin Sin asks why he came empty-handed. It turns out that it is Si Omen's birthday. Si Omen can't believe that he forgot. He offers to buy something for her later, and the crowd laughs at him because they think Lu Chen is poor. Si Omen tells him there's no need because she is breaking up with him, and Lu Chen immediately replies, okay. Si Omen asks what he said, and Lu Chen repeats that he is okay with it. Si Omen thinks this is impossible, because she knows Lu Chen will always kneel before her. A colleague advises Lu Chen to apologize, but he claims it is pointless. Xiaomen lashes out at him and claims that he won't ever get a girlfriend and that no woman will ever like him because he is poor. Just then, 
someone refuses her statement, and land buyer gracefully appears and mocks to Tioman for just looking at a man's wallet. Tioman gets mad, and buyer picks up a microphone. She then sings a song, confessing her feelings to Luo Chen. Everyone gets shocked, and Tioman accuses Luo Chen of cheating. Luo Chen then threatens her about her relationship with Chen Cho being exposed. Wang Kai appears and acts like a hero, challenging Luo Chen. Wang Kai attacks, but Luo Chen easily knocks him out. Xiaomin is surprised by how Lu Chen changed. John Hai uses his managerial position to fire Lu Chen from his department. Lu Chen is surprised that a direct superior can easily fire subordinates without a reason. He asked Fire to call someone for him. Everyone laughs at Lu Chen, and Officer Jingjing Jing appears. They report Lu Chen's action to her, and Bayer tries to defend Lu Chen. They asked her to arrest Lu Chen for assault. Jingjing Jing declines them because it is not her jurisdiction. She claims that she is here for Lu Chen. She asks to live with Lu Chen from now on, shocking everyone. Lu Chen gets confused, but Jingjing Jing insists on living with him. Bayer gets mad and tells her to fall in line properly. The others are shocked to see two beautiful girls fighting over Lu Chen. Xiaomin calls the two girls idiots for falling for a man without a job. Just then, the manager in the highest position, Manager D.I., arrives and apologizes to Lu Chen for being late. Lu Chen tells the manager to fire the three he points out. Sing Sin gets mad, but John Hai asks the top manager how he called Lu Chen again. Manager Dai tells them that Lu Chen is the boss of their company. Sing Sin shouts at him for talking nonsense, but Manager Di shows proof that Lu Chen owns all of the stocks in Tongzhou Media. Xiaomin gets mad after finding out right after she broke up with him. Manager Di confirms that the three are all fired, and Sin Sin continues shouting. Just then, B.O.G. arrives, and Zhang Hai asks to beat up Luo Chen. Zhang Hai laughs when Luo Chen is over. However, Hong Bio's group apologizes to Luo Chen. Hong Bio presents a gift, but Luo Chen doesn't receive it and tells Hong Bio to live better instead. Luo Chen leaves as Hong Bio thanks him. Hong Bio's group then takes care of the people who badmouth Luo Chen. Afterward, Lu Chen is in the middle of a calf fight between Land Buyer and Xi Jingjing. The women still argue over Lu Chen. Lu Chen decides to leave, but Xi Jingjing claims that her body felt weird after last night's incident. Land Buyer panics but remembers that Lu Chen is not the type to be close to women. Just then, Xi Jingjing tries to open her shirt, and Land Buyer also joins in to seduce Lu Chen. Xi Jingjing then exposes her skin and shows a black spot. Lu Chen tells her that it will be gone after two days. Lu Chen tries to leave again, but Xi Jingjing stops him, claiming that Lu Chen and Land Buyer are related to the disappearance of Wang Fu. Lu Chen then asks for evidence, but Xi Jingjing can't find any beforehand. Xi Jingjing then insists on staying in the room so she can monitor the suspects. Land Buyer also decides to stay and Lu Chen gives up. That night, Lu Chen cultivates and suddenly Yi Shuang comes crying, surprising the other girls. Yi Shuang notices the girls and thinks her master is playing around. She then tells Lu Chen that Yi Shengshen needs help. They then leave all together and arrive at Yi Shengshen's room. Yi Shengshen scolds Yi Shuang for bothering Lu Chen, but then he starts coughing blood. A doctor insists on doing a treatment, but Lu Chen tells them to go out. Lu Chen notices the injury given to the old man and he uses his spiritual power to calm the dark energy. The treatment is finished, and Lu Chen asked what happened. Yi Zhengxin got ambushed by a master who is unaffected by bullets and kidnapped his son. Lu Chen asks them to take him to that master. Yi Zhengxin was worried but later decided to accompany him. The next day, they arrive at an arena. Yi Zhengxin finds out that three masters are already defeated. Just then, a self-proclaimed King of Nui Tai appears. Mu Rongxiang laughs at them for sending in a foreigner. The fight starts and Mu Rongxiang only dodges until the Mue Tai King gets mad. Mu Rongxiang then ends the fight and asks for the next challenger. The crowd didn't see how he attacked, but Lu Chen saw it. Mu Rongxiang then laughs at how Tongxia people are weak. He Zhengxin shouts at him and looks for his son. Mu Rongxiang shows his hostages and asks them to defeat him first. He Zhengxin then proudly presents Lu Chen, but people doubt him for looking young. Mu Rongxiang laughs. Lu Chen goes up to the stage and Mu Rongxiang haughtily allows Lu Chen to name himself. Lu Chen tells him that he is not worthy enough to know. Lu Chen immediately attacks and punches Mu Rongxiang so hard that he goes flying into a building's top wall. 
Hong Biao applauds and shouts Lu Chen's name. The crowd is now relieved that Mi Rongxiang is dead. Just then, an old man appears. Wan Yang claims that Tong Zhao is his now. A sniper shoots at him, but Wan Yang stops the bullet. He throws the bullet at the person who ordered the sniper. Wan Yang tells Lu Chen that he will forget about Lu Chen killing his disciple. Lu Chen laughs and claims that no one in this world can become his teacher. Wan Yang proudly claims that he can block bullets. However, Lu Chen calls in a small fry. Irritated, Wan Yang attacks Lu Chen, but the latter easily dodges. Wan Yang claims heavy weapons can't damage him and looks down on Lu Chen. Lu Chen attacks, and Wan Yang proudly blocks and fends off Lu Chen. However, Lu Chen now knows why people are scared of Wan Yang. The others are worried after Lu Chen got blocked. Wan Yang tells him to surrender, and Lu Chen asks if those are his last words. Wan Yang attacks him, and Lu Chen activates the Emperor's scripture. He then uses it on Wan Yang, and the old man finds himself in a different dimension with a huge sun. The sun turns into Lu Wuji and threatens Wan Yang, who is now trembling in fear. The onlookers can only see Wan Yang freezing on the stage. Lu Chen punches and smashes Wan Yang's head. Yi Zhengxin and Hong Biao both freeze at the sight of Lu Chen. The crowd cheers at Lu Chen, and he sees his seed with a defense attribute. He will use it to replenish the energy he used today. Meanwhile, a suspicious onlooker gives out an order to kill Lu Chen. Business people try to win Lu Chen's favor, but Yi Zhengxin acts haughty as the Yi clan supports Lu Chen. However, Yi Zhengxin worries that they can't keep Lu Chen forever. One suggests letting Yi Xuan keep Lu Chen using her body, and Yi Zhengxin gets mad. Later, Lu Chen asks Yi Xuan to help him get money and invite tenders for the construction of Pan Longwen. The next day, Lu Chen absorbs the seed he recently received. Two individuals arrive and want to talk about something. Lu Chen wants to know them first, but Fei Long gets mad at how arrogant Lu Chen is. Fei Long challenges Lu Chen, and he will disclose things if Lu Chen wins. He attacks Lu Chen, but he gets deflected. The woman acts for mercy while Fei Long trembles at the feeling of death nearing him. Fei Long apologizes, and the woman reveals that they are from the Third Armed Forces. They sit down for a discussion, and the woman explains that order is the most valuable thing in the world. If Lu Chen completes their request, the Third Armed Forces will provide Lu Chen with everything, and he will be given the identity of becoming the order itself. Lu finds it interesting because he needs an identity to avoid trouble. Lu Chen then offers to listen. They requested to protect a Ningyu, the daughter of an important researcher who just went missing. The professor's research is top secret, and the key is in Ningyu. A code from her gene sequence is the server's password. They are not sure if the opposing party knows already. Lu Chen asks how long he will protect her, but they are unsure of the duration. The woman then confesses that they reached out to Lu Chen because there might be a spy in the armed forces. The professor might have been kidnapped with help from the inside. Lu Chen then gives them three days. Just then, a call comes and surprises the woman. Meanwhile, the opposing party already had a Ningyu and brought her to the Genome Research Lab. They oppressed everyone inside. Later, Lu Chen arrives with the two at the scene. The woman then asks to save a Ningyu within two hours, and the rewards promised will be given. Lu Chen accepts the deal but someone from the first armed forces arrives. He calls the third armed forces trash. The first armed forces special team goes into the lab. They scurry to the hallways and meet a researcher. It turns out she is a suicide bomber, and everyone outside sees the explosion. Some members of the unit inside survive, but a man attacks them with monstrous strength. He grabs their heads and smashes them easily. Bullets are also ineffective against him. They lost contact with the unit, and someone brought in a master. Lu is now ready to go in, but the first armed force insists on having the master go inside first. Fei Long claims Lu Chen is stronger, but the master calls Lu Chen a brat. Master Hong is from the famous Baji sect. He calls Lu Chen inexperienced and a show-off. Lu Chen asks if he can do it, and Master Hong laughs. He asks to bring out a cup of tea. He claims he will finish the mission before the tea gets cold. He goes inside and faces the man with monstrous strength. Later, the tea is gone cold, and they see Master Hong coming out. He runs away from the lab and asks for the medical team to treat his lost arm. Lu Chen has only one hour left and asks if he will keep the enemies alive. Master Hong trembles in fear, remembering what he encountered, 
and claims that the girl can't be saved. He hears that Lu Chen went in and underestimates him too much. Lu Chen meets the man with monstrous strength. The man laughs at them for coming in one by one. Lu Chen just smiles. Meanwhile, the enemies are almost done analyzing a Ning Yu's gene sequence. The woman then claims that someone strong came because she didn't receive any reports downstairs. The man died at the hands of Lu Chen. Lu Chen then scans the building. He finds the room and kills the guard by sending his bullet back. He enters the room, and the woman attacks Lu Chen from above. Meanwhile, Master Hong claims the mission is impossible to accomplish and suggests exploding the floor the enemies are on. The third armed force commander claims Lu Chen can still do it. Master Hong claims the kid might have just gone home. The first armed force commander then gives orders to prepare missiles. They fire an artillery shot, but a barrier blocks it. Lu Chen jumps out from the floor, carrying a Ningyu. They confirm that all enemies have been eliminated. Master Hong can't believe that Lu Chen succeeded. He creates a ruckus, but Lu Chen slaps him. He tries to threaten Lu Chen with the Baji sect's name, but Lu Chen cuts his other arm. Just then, Lu Chen receives a call from his father. Lu Chen picks it up, and his father starts scolding him because of Xiaoman. He was told to go to Xiaoman's place. He remembers how his father worked hard after he got tricked by Xiaoman. Soon after, his father died in an accident. Lu Chen is worried that his father might be surprised by his sudden change. Lu Chen then asks to discuss the rewards later and takes him somewhere first. On the way, the Third Armed Forces leader discusses that Lu Chen will be an instructor at their affiliated school. Lu Chen tries to decline, but the leader claims that they need forces against enemies like the ones he just fought. They are top-notch soldiers who have brought back a mysterious power from Kunlun. The leader offers research results about the mysterious power, and Lu Chen agrees with them. However, Lu Chen mentions that this is not the reward. He then asks to find out all the information related to Chen Chao. Later, Lu Chen meets his father after hundreds of years. The two fathers talk about their son and daughter getting married. Lu Chen plans to expose Xiaomen, but he doesn't have evidence to show yet. Xiaomen, on the other hand, knows Lu Chen won't leave her because of his father. However, Lu Chen knows her true intentions. The next day, Lu Chen plans to lead the meeting on the construction of Panglong One. However, his father calls and tells him that Xiaomen and her mother invited him to look for properties. Xiaomen's mother asks for a property, but Lu Chen's father finds it expensive. Xiaomen's mother complains, assuming that he is rich and loaded. After some time, they finally choose a property, but Lu Chen's father is still shocked by the price. Xiaomen's mother claims it will not be difficult for him because Lu Chen owns a company. He doesn't know about it, and she snaps, thinking that Lu Chen was just tricking them. She continues talking badly about Lu Chen's father until Hong Biao appears and calls her an old lady. She continues to talk badly about Lu Chen until Lu Chen arrives. Hong Biao sticks to Lu Chen and also greets his father. Xiaomen's mother wonders who Hong Biao is, and the employee calls him boss. He recalls Xiaomen's mother calling Lu Chen's father poor and asking his employee who is in charge of the Pan Longwen development. The employee shows that Lu Chen is the boss in charge of thousands of residences in Pan Longwen. Lu Chen's father is confused but Lu Chen claims to explain it to him at a later time and not to meddle between him and Xiaomen. He reveals that they have already broken up. Meanwhile, Lan Bayer receives from her manager the news that she can see Lu Chen. Lan Bayer gets excited and her manager sends the address. Xiaomen panics and apologizes. Her mother also asks to forgive her, but Lu Chen tells them to leave. Xiaomen runs away, and her mother gets mad at Lu Chen. Just then, Lan Bayer comes and sticks to Lu Chen. She immediately introduces herself to Lu Chen's father, who recognizes her as a celebrity. She also sarcastically talks to Xiaomen's mother, making the old woman run away. Lu Chen asks if she did that internationally. She laughs and asks Lu Chen's father about her acting. She immediately gets friendly with Lu Chen's father, and they go mall shopping. Lan Bayer made the father-son duo try out some clothes. Lu Chen's father is satisfied with the cheap clothing. Suddenly, a handsome Lu Chen comes out, and Lan Bayer brings out her black card. Lu Chen, Lan Bayer, and Lu Chen's father went for a meal. Lu Chen's father worries about the expensive menu at the restaurant. Lan Bayer tells him not to worry, and Lu Chen tells him not to. Just then, Lu Chen goes out to talk to his staff, and a bald man passes by. The bald man is video calling Chen Chao, and Chen Chao notices Lu Chen. 
Chen Cho gets mad seeing Liu Chen because Liu Chen made Ti Omen block her. He asks the bald man to get revenge on Liu Chen. The bald man then plots a scheme. Later, Liu Chen's father got a call and went outside. He then picks up the call, and the bald man starts his scheme. A waiter bumps into Liu Chen's father and drops an expensive glass of wine. The waiter begins shouting at him. He apologizes, and the waiter twists the story in front of the other guests. A woman tells the waiter not to let poor people enter the restaurant next time. She even laughs at Liu Chen's father's shirt. Thinking not to cause trouble for his son, Liu Chen's father tries to pay the waiter. The waiter and the woman laugh at him for handing out a hundred yuan. The waiter then tells him that he needs to pay a thousand. Liu Chen's father starts arguing with the waiter until Liu Chen and Lan Buyer appear. Liu Chen listened to what happened. Lan Buyer asks for the security footage, but the waiter claims that it is broken. She then tries to pay, but the waiter increases the price. Liu Chen then asks for the manager. The bald man arrives and apologizes for the waiter's actions. However, he asks for more money. Liu Chen tells his father and land buyer to go away first. The waiter tries to stop them, but Liu Chen kicks him aside. Liu Chen asks land buyer to go with his father, and she complies. She notices how angry Liu Chen is. The bald man then throws a knife toward Liu Chen and asks him to pay with money in his hand. Liu Chen then gets mad at him. The bald man claims that there are no more than 10 people who dare stand against him in Tongzhao. Lu Chen then brings out talismans and sends them away. Yi Zhengxin, Hong Biao, and Kuan Kun receive them. Everyone immediately moves out with Hong Biao and his men. Yi Zhengxin tells him to move quickly. Yi Zhengxin can't believe he easily uses a talisman from miles away. Meanwhile, the armed forces discover a large number of people and vehicles moving, and everyone is related to the Yi family. The director then decides to call Liu Chen. Back at the restaurant, the bald man is confidently confronting Liu Chen. Just then, someone shouts, asking who offended his lord Liu. The bald man looks back and trembles upon seeing Hong Biao. Hong Biao then asks the bald man. Liu Chen receives a call from the armed forces. He tells them that someone offended him and his father. The armed forces director then orders his men to secure the area and not to intervene. Quan Kun also arrives making the bald man fall into shock. Quan Kun looks at him and slaps him. The bald man is still confused about what is happening until Yi Zhengxin appears. Lu Chen asks them again for the price. Hong Biao shows the security footage that shows that the waiter bumped into his father on purpose. The waiter blames the bald man. Lu Chen then glares at him, and the waiter falls dead. The bald man begs for mercy. Lu Chen then orders everyone to destroy the place. He tells the bald man to rebuild it in seven days, and then Lu Chen will have everyone destroyed again. The bald man is devastated. The woman was glad she was not called out, but her face suddenly cracked. When they get out, Lu Chen receives a message from Fei Long about his request to investigate Chen Chao. He meets his father, who was worried the whole time. Lu Chen now has evidence that Chen Chao was connected to the killer of his father in his previous life. He swears to kill Chu Yunhao. The next day, Lu Chen and his father come back to their county. Lu Chen's father gets mad for not letting Lan Buyer go with them. His father asks what happened to Lu Chen in Tongzhou. However, Lu Chen asks about his mother in exchange. Lu Chen's father feigns ignorance and walks away. They arrive at their factory and meet Yang Mingwei, Lu Chen's friend who is now working in their factory. Lu Chen's father shoulders Yang Mingwei's tuition. John Campen, as a cultivator, Lu Chen tells Yang Mingwei to give it up. That night, John Campen meets some suspicious people, and they plan to perform a ceremony. Meanwhile, Yang Mingui receives Jean Panpan's phone, which an aunt found in the restroom. Yang Mingui walks in the mountains after seeing a message from Jean Panpan's phone. Jean Panpan, on the other hand, performs the ceremony with a long-haired master. Lu Chen calls Yang Mingui to have some skewers, but he suddenly hears Jean Panpan's voice. The long-haired master tells Jean Panpan to endure the pain. Yang Mingui arrives, and the master tells his men to take care of him. Zhang Pampin tries to stop him, but the master tells her to continue chanting. The men attack Yang Mingui, but Zhang Pampin saves him. Zhang Pampin gets captured, as does Yang Mingui. Just then, Lu Chen arrives and asks Yang Mingui to pay the bill. Yang Mingui tells Lu Chen to run. The men confront Lu Chen, and Zhang Pampin asks to let the boys go. However, the master tells her to choose one to let go while the other dies. John Pampin cries as she blames herself. 
Lu Chen scratches his head and gives the master two choices, kneel and serve him or die. The men get mad at him for disrespecting their god. Lu Chen laughs as he finds it ridiculous. The master scares Lu Chen with an attack. John Panpan and Yang Mingui are scared to death. Lu Chen finds the master's skills decent. The master scares Lu Chen, but the latter challenges him instead. One of the men attacks Lu Chen, but he easily kills the man with a simple slap. They recognize Lu Chen as a master, and they attack together. The master tells them to back down, but Lu Chen tells him that it is too late. He easily kills everyone, and the onlookers from afar are shocked. Zhang Penpin is now doubting Lu Chen's identity after killing men with high cultivation. The master tries to show his real power, and Lu Chen lats out loud. The master gets offended and attacks Zhang Panpin and Yang Mingui. Both of them freeze, and the master feels smug. Just then, Lu Chen shows a better skill, the Ice of the Dragon. Lu Chen tells the master to kneel, and the master complies. Lu Chen tells him that he will be his servant from now on. He then thanks Lu Chen for sparing his life. Later, Yang Mingui and Zhang Panpin wake up and go back home, as Lu Chen tells them to keep everything a secret. Lu Chen knows that they will try to avoid him now. Meanwhile, Chen Chao asks for Chen Yunhao's help to make a mess in Lu Chen's life. Chen Chao is sure that Lu Chen is dead this time. The next day, Tang Rufeng and Xi O are on their way to Lu Chen to send a letter of challenge. While Lu Chen is cultivating, he catches a bamboo of the challenge. His father checks on him, but Lu Chen is gone. Lu Chen meets the people from Baji sect, and he asks them how they got his address. Xiao tells him that he doesn't know and throws a punch as he proudly claims himself as an expert. However, Lu Chen slaps him and sends him flying. Tang Rufeng can't believe what he just witnessed. Lu Chen then asks the rest the same question. Tang Rufeng tells Lu Chen that it is from Chen Chao. He then delivers the letter and Lu Chen tells them to scram. Lu Chen cleans up the remains of Xiao, and his father discovers him. He later explains everything to his father, except the part where he regressed. Lu Chen asks his father if he is scared of him now, but his father claims that Lu Chen is his precious son. Lu Chen realizes that only his father will wholly accept him. That night, Chen Chou is now sure that Lu Chen is dead. He laughs until the lights turn off. Just then, Lu Chen appears from the veranda, and Chen Chou gets surprised. Lu Chen claims he prepared some things to make Chen Chou's death interesting. Chen Chou then grabs a knife and tries to attack Lu Chen. However, Lu Chen grabs his hand. Chen Chao wonders why Lu Chen is still alive. Lu Chen punches Chen Chou's face. Chen Chou then threatens Lu Chen, even if he is protected by the Yi family. Lu Chen tells him to be quiet and asks him how a normal person was able to become a big shot in Tongzhou. He then tells Chen Chao that he is protecting the Yi family. Chen Chao doubts his words, and Lu Chen brings him to an illusionary world. Lu Chen activated his emperor's script and drowned the poor Chen Chao in a sea of corpses. He leaves Chen Chao in his room. Later, Lu Chen returns home with the reason that he just went to buy things at the supermarket. He can't leave his father alone, and it's a good thing that he agreed to go with him to Tong Zhao. His father then starts to talk about his mother. Lu Chen really never remembered his mother. Now that his father has seen his powers, he plans to tell Luo Chen. However, he must not go looking for her if he hasn't prepared yet. Luo Chen's father met his mother when they were working at the law enforcement agency. They dated and kept it hidden. However, their relationship was discovered, and they promised to marry each other. His father discovered that his mother is from Jingji's Shen family, an influential and powerful clan. The Shen family got his mother back, and his father drowned in sorrow. However, she appears again, and they secretly move to the countryside. They were then blessed with Lu Chen, and they thought Lu Chen could change things. They went back to Jinji, but the Shen family blocked his father and Lu Chen away. To protect them, his mother didn't get in touch with them, and his father feared things while Lu Chen was growing up. Lu Chen can't believe that his father has such a past. Lu Chen then claims to have brought his mother back. His father believes in Lu Chen because of the abilities he possesses. However, he won't provide the name and photos of his mother. Lu Chen then asks about the closest area in Tongzhou, where the Shen family is influential. It is in Heidong, where the Baji sect is situated. Lu Chen called Hong Biao and ordered Yi Zhengxin and the others to move out to Heidong. Soon after, Fei Long calls Lu Chen after seeing that Lu Chen has arrived in Heidong. 
Lu Chen tells him there is no need to fetch him because he needs to go somewhere first. His goals are the Baji sect, Chu Yunhao, and information on the Shen family. Just then, Fei Long warns him about the recent homicides in the area, and that the culprit is not an ordinary person. Just then, a woman named Jiang Tongren approaches Lu Chen. She asks if she can get a lift because she doesn't have money. Lu Chen then hails a taxi, and Jiang Tongren also rides. Lu Chen claims he is in head-on for work. She then warns Lu Chen about the recent cases, but Lu Chen louts it off. Lu Chen realizes that Jiang Tongren resembles a woman he knows. She then proudly claims that she is the niece of Shen Yulin, the Heidong Commerce President. Lu Chen is surprised and asks her if she is from Jingji's Shen family. She confirms that her aunt has been cut off from them and proudly recites her aunt's achievements. Lu Chen thinks that it might not be a coincidence. They arrive somewhere and they finally introduce each other. She gives Lu Chen a business card and claims that she works in a bar. She offers lodgings, but Lu Chen declines. They part ways, and Lu Chen notices a masked woman watching them. Meanwhile, Zhang Tongren walks into an alleyway, and an ominous entity creeps behind her. Lu Chen arrives at the bar where Zhang Tongren works. While Zhang Tongren is preparing her specialty drink, he remembers the strange presence that is supposed to be targeting Zhang Tongren. It disappeared after Lu Chen got close. Just then, Zhang Tongren presents her specialty drink, and Lu Chen takes it. Zhang Tongren gets called, and a man tries to talk to Lu Chen. Lu Chen ignores him, and the man gets mad while claiming that Zhang Tongren will be his wife. Just then, Chu Yunhao appears as a customer and scolds and hurts Zhang Tongren. Lu Chen and tells the man to protect his woman, but he is scared of Chu Yunhao. Lu Chen calls him trash, and he grabs a glass. He throws the glass to Chu Yunhao. Chu Yunhao angrily asks who threw the glass at him. Lu Chen walks forward and Jiang Tongren gets surprised. Chu Yunhao laughs and tells Lu Chen to kneel. Jiang Tongren tries to stop Lu Chen, but Lu Chen tells Chu Yunhao to kneel for him instead. Chu Yunhao orders his men to attack Lu Chen. He tells the rest of his men to handle Lu Chen's body later. However, Lu Chen is beating up his men easily, and he confronts Chu Yunhao. Chu Yunhao tries to attack Lu Chen. Lu Chen fights back and ends Chu Yunhao's bloodline. Chu Yunhao falls in pain, and Lu Chen steps on his head. Lu Chen continues to step on Chu Yunhao until Tang Rufeng arrives. They thought Lu Chen's life was over, but Tang Rufeng had some nightmarish flashbacks after seeing Lu Chen. Chu Yunhao asks Tang Rufeng to kill Lu Chen. Tang Rufeng trembles and tells Chu Yunhao that Lu Chen is the one who slapped his master, Ao Shi, to death. Chu Yunhao doubts Tang Rufeng's words, and the latter suggests calling Ao Shi. Chu Yunhao then remembers not getting in touch with his master after Ao, she went to the countryside. Tang Rufeng apologizes and Lu Chen lets him be. Chu Yunhao then offers help with some things and claims that he is also entering the blood fiends. Lu Chen spares Chu Yunhao's life. Chu Yunhao leaves as he swears to get his revenge on Lu Chen someday. Afterward, Zhang Tongren couldn't believe she had flirted with a great hidden figure. She worries that Lu Chen has offended Chu Yunhao, but Lu Chen claims that Chu Yunhao won't disturb her. The butterfly following them returned to a red-haired woman. Zhang Tongren welcomes Lu Chen to her room but is in a mess. Later, Zhang Tongren cleaned everything, and Lu Chen claims that he didn't see anything. Zhang Tongren then tells him to use the extra room. The night deepens, and the man from before gets attacked by a Chinese zombie known as Zhang Shi. Lu Chen detected it from afar. The malicious entity gets attacked by talismans, and the red-haired woman captures it. The Zhang Shi roars in pain, but the red-haired woman tells it to stop acting. The Zhang Shi breaks out of the seals, and the woman realizes that it is not a normal Zhang Shi. It attacked her, but it was only an afterimage. The woman summons normal undead to hold down the Zhang Shi. She places a talisman on the Jiangxi, but the Jiangxi easily rips it off and attacks the woman. She realizes that it is stronger now due to the number of people it has killed. The Jiangxi stabs her, but the woman uses venomous insects on the Jiangxi. She falls unconscious as she apologizes to her ancestors for ending their bloodline. Just then, Lu Chen arrives. The Jiangxi throws the woman aside, and she tells Lu Chen to run away. The Jiangxi tries to finish the woman off. However, Lu Chen sends the Jiangxi flying with a strike. The woman calls Lu Chen a martial arts master, but Lu Chen calls her blind. The Jiangxi attacks again, 
and the woman tells Lu Chen to be careful. Lu Chen clashes with the Jiangxi. Lu Chen goes behind the Jiangxi and slants it on the ground. The woman gets surprised, and Lu Chen tells her to shut up. The Jiangxi comes back up and tries to retaliate, but Lu Chen keeps on overpowering it. The woman can't believe Lu Chen only uses brute strength against her. Lu Chen tries to finish it off. However, the Jiangxi escapes. The woman tries to do something, but Lu Chen knocks her out. Later the woman wakes up and asks why Lu Chen attacked her. Lu Chen explains that her body has already absorbed too much poison. Lu Chen tells her not to move too much. The woman then asks Lu Chen a favor. She tells him to get a nearby porcelain with medicine and asks him to take off her clothes. Lu Chen then forcefully strips her. Meanwhile, Xu Yunhao's father complains about how their bloodline almost ended. He assures Xu Yunhao that they will get revenge on Lu Chen with the help of another master, Feng Tanli. Xu Yunhao laughs as he thinks Lu Chen will now be dead. The next day, Zhang Tongren packs up her things to leave for Xiangxi. Lu Chen is surprised to hear Xiangxi again. Last night, Lu Chen helped the red-haired woman get treated. She also mentions that the Jiangxi they fought was a cultivator in the past from Xiangxi, who turned into a monster after dying. The woman's clan sealed the Jiangxi before, but someone released it, and now she is hunting it. Lu Chen recognizes that the Jiangxi was a cultivator before. The woman claims that the escape method used by the Jiangxi was costly, and that it might rest back in Xiangxi's ancient city. The woman wants to go with Lu Chen to hunt down the Jiangxi. Zhang Tonkin then leaves and Lu Chen plans to do his second-level awakening. Two days later, Chu Yunhao and his father meet Chen Bojio and Ma Zongxi. Just then, Lu Chen arrives, and Chu Yunhao ridicules him. He Zhengxin and He Xuan get mad, and more people from Tongzhou appear. Lu Chen is surprised to see them. He Zhengxin claims they arrived to support Lu Chen. Chu Yunhao's father is surprised to see a prominent figure bowing to Lu Chen. Chen Bojio and Ma Zongxi discuss how the fight between Lu Chen and Feng Tanli will transpire. Lu Chen stands on the field and Baji Sex Feng Tanli arrives. Feng Tanli is mad at Lu Chen for hurting his disciples. However, Lu Chen ridicules him and tells him to work in the circus instead. The old master gets mad, and Lu Chen tells him to attack first. Feng Tanli persistently attacks Lu Chen. Remembering that Lu Chen defeated some prominent masters, Feng Tanli called him a brandmaster, which surprised everyone. Feng Tanli punches Lu Chen, but a barrier blocks his punch, and Lu Chen tells Feng Tanli that it is dumb that he made him his enemy. Feng Tanli doesn't have a choice now, and he brings out his strongest punch. A huge explosion occurs, and everyone recognizes that as Feng Tanli's strongest move. Feng Tanli laughs as Lu Chen turns into a ghost. However, Lu Chen comes out and ridicules Feng Tanli's strongest move. Everyone gets surprised and Feng Tanli shouts out that it is impossible for Lu Chen to survive. Lu Chen calls him average and attacks for the first time, obliterating Feng Tanli. People from Tongzhou cheer while the masters are worried. Chen Bojio gets mad and attacks Lu Chen. However, Lu Chen easily sends him flying. Lu Chen then tells everyone to attack him. Chu Yunhao is surprised that Lu Chen killed two grandmasters so easily. Just then, a block of massive ice appears, and Chu Yunhao's father claims that the toys close to Feng Tanli is here. The Baiji sect is over their master's death and now asks the Taoists for help. Chu Yunhao is sure that Lu Chen is dead now. Lu Chen calls out to his lowly servant to get down. The Baiji sect members got mad but were surprised to see Master Zhang rolling down the stairs and bowing down to Lu Chen. To make things clear, Lu Chen asks Master Zhang who he is and Master Zhang shouts out loud that he is his servant. Hong Biao laughed out loud and called the others embarrassed. Lu Chen then tells Master Zhang to clean up things for him, leaving out Xu Yunhao. Three days later, some young men are looking for someone in the streets. They encounter someone and ask if Lu Chen lives in the area. The next day, the men escorted Lu Chen to the Blood Fiend's training camp. Meanwhile, at the training camp, people worry that the new instructor will be late because of the fierce weather. However, the captain believes this is a test to see if Lu Chen deserves to be their instructor. Lu Chen and his escorts are at the docks and will not be able to use the speedboat. Lu Chen tells him not to worry, and he quickly summons a water whale and rides it. Back at the training camp, someone notices a man riding a whale while flying midair. The others laugh, but just then, Lu Chen appears. He stands on a rock and introduces himself as Lu Wuji, their new instructor. 
Lu Chen also heard before that a newly appointed instructor spars with the members first as a rule of etiquette. He then challenges everyone to attack him all at once. Everyone attacks Lu Chen. Lu Chen fends off one of them with one finger. Lu Chen sees that they have great teamwork, but they are still weak. Everyone gets knocked down without Lu Chen moving from his spot. Lu Chen then tells them that Blood Fiend will always follow his words. They comply and Lu Chen tells them to go back and sleep. The next day, Chu Yanhao rides a ship to the training camp. Later, as one of the new recruits, he visits the instructor's office. He is surprised to see Lu Chen and wonders why he is there. Lu Chen orders the others to leave except for a random recruit, who is actually the weakest among the bunch. Chu Yanhao then curses at him. Lu Chen claims he was soft-hearted last time, so Chu Yanhao's accumulated hope to this point will be destroyed. Chu Yanhao tries to run away, but Lu Chen crushes all his limbs. Lu Chen tells him to enjoy the next seven days of being crippled. He then orders the others to keep Chu Yanhao alive, while making sure that he is alive. The next day, Captain Su Hu is chilling and tells Xu Yi, the second armed forces commander's daughter, comes. She complains about how the blood fiends are lazing around. Su Hu explains that their new instructor instructed them to do so as training. Su Yi gets mad and claims to find Luo Chen. She barges into Luo Chen's office. She complains that there is a martial arts tournament in two months. The others arrive and try to drive off Su Yi. Just then, something passes by Su Yi, who discovers a piece of paper lodged in the wall. She gets scared after realizing that Luo Chen is a grandmaster. She apologizes and Luo Chen warns her. Later, Luo Chen calls Wai Ziking. He then tells the others to train for two weeks. However, Wai Ziking will follow Lu Chen's training method. He guarantees that Wai Ziking can defeat them all. The others are in doubt, but Lu Chen is serious. Afterward, Wai Ziking is worried that he might disappoint Lu Chen. Lu Chen tells him not to overthink. He discovers that Wai Ziking has the War Endurance Constitution, an extremely rare physique in the Immortal Realm. Wai Ziking then fires himself up and tells Lu Chen that he is ready for the training. However, Lu Chen tells him to eat first. The other Blood Fiend members are training hard while Lu Chen and Wai Ziking are relaxing under the shade. The others are complaining, but Su Hu reminds them to concentrate. Days later, officers come for an inspection, and Director Su is worried about Lu Chen's recent antics. Officer Yang introduces herself, but Lu Chen chooses to ignore her and tells all the Blood Fiend members to gather. He orders everyone to do their best and tells Wai Ziking to prepare. Devil is the first one to challenge Wai Ziking. He is known for his fast killing strikes. Devil apologizes as he attacks, and Wai Ziking recalls Lu Chen telling him about legends. He must think that legends can exist by opening his imagination. Wai Ziking then activates his spiritual perception. He can now sense spiritual power and a change in the flow of Kai. It looked like time had stopped, and Lu Chen smiled at him. Wai Ziking takes this chance to strike Devil, who got sent flying afterward. Everyone gets surprised, and Su Hu tells Devil to surrender and check his nape. Su Hu then goes forward and rushes to Wai Ziking. Wai Ziking blocks all of the attacks, and Su Hu is surprised. Wai Ziking blinks forward and apologizes. He sends Su Hu flying and inflicts internal injuries. Su Hu claims that it is impossible since they only see Wai Ziking relaxing. Lu Chen then claims to restart from the beginning to be able to win against his opponents. Lu Chen tells them to accept it. Just then, a master appears and calls Lu Chen a crook, making Wai Ziking mad. Officer Yang sends off Master Wang Zhou to fight. Lu Chen then sends out Wai Ziking. Wai Ziking attacks, but he is easily countered. Wang Zhou attacks and Wai Ziking can only block. Lu Chen tells him to stop playing around. Wang Zhou laughs at them for pretending to be strong. He attacks, but Wai Ziking blinks behind Wang Zhou, grabs him, and throws him to the ground. Wai Ziking tells Wang Zhou that he doesn't deserve to fight Luo Chen. Wang Zhou becomes hostile, making Su Hu panic. However, Luo Chen grabs Wang Zhou's arm. He apologizes, but Luo Chen rips off his arm. Officer Yang intervenes and Luo Chen throws the arm at her. Luo Chen tells Director Su to take them away. He reminds Wai Ziking to never turn his back on the enemy. Later, Director Su tries to calm down Officer Yang. The old woman wants to punish Lu Chen for hurting her subordinate. Director Su refutes that it was Wang Zhu who was hostile and could have hurt the trainees. Officer Yang then suggests making Lu Chen defeat the Corpse King, 
but she won't make Liu Chen accountable. Liu Chen arrives and agrees. Director Su worries, but Liu Chen tells him not to worry. Officer Yang sarcastically commends Liu Chen's courage. Meanwhile, in Xianji Shimizu City, Zhang Tongren argues with the red-haired woman about moving their altar for construction. Zhang Tongren's aunt arrives and tells the red-haired woman that they will leave now. The aunt tells Zhang Tongren to be patient in negotiations, and she must know what the other party needs. While the aunt teaches her more, she notices Liu Chen. Zhang Tongren introduces Liu Chen to her aunt, Yu Ran. Liu Chen notices her beads and tells her to throw them away as soon as possible. Yu Ran finds Liu Chen strange. He tells them that he is meeting Zhe the red-haired woman, to get something to resist corpse poison. Zhang Tongren then asks Liu Chen if he can help them. Yu Ran is planning to build an orphanage, and Zigdi's family is in there and unwilling to sell the area to them. Liu Chen then agrees to help. However, he first asks Yu Ran if she knows Liu Yangxi, Liu Chen's father. Shen Yu Ran claims that she doesn't know Liu Yangsu. Liu Chen thinks he is just overthinking. Shen Yu Ran now reminds Liu Chen about his promise to help. They go back inside, and Apu Zigid is pissed. She tells them to go away and discovers her savior, Liu Chen. Later, Zagi agrees with Shen Yu Ran's proposal, all because of Liu Chen. Shen Yu Ran is surprised and wonders what Liu Chen's identity is. The contracts are done, and the Auntie Nis duo thanks Liu Chen and offers help someday. Liu Chen claims ordinary people can't repay him. Shen Yu Ran gets mad at him, and she leaves together with Jiang Tong Ran. Later, Zagi leads Liu Chen to a basement and shows him a pill that can resist poison. However, Liu Chen claims it is not effective enough for the Blood Corpse King. Zidge then asks Liu Chen's help to catch the Blood Corpse King, and she will pay him handsomely. Liu Chen then asks for the Corpse King's location, and Zidge tells him about the Heavenly Medicine Group's Shi family, who stole the Corpse King before. The Corpse King then escaped from their grasp and went to Dong Hai, where Liu Chen met it. It is now in Shang Kexi, and they can't fight back against it. The Shi family even invited Zidge to heal their head, she is our guide, but she declined. Lu Chen suggests accepting her invitation, and then Lu Chen will improve the anti-poison pill to give it to Shi Isaigui later. Later, in the infected Shi family, they receive the pills from Ziggy's clan. They doubt her actions. Nevertheless, Shi Isaigui tries out the pill. The pill sucks out the poison, and Shi Isaigui returns to normal. Later, Zhang Yifi from the Tianyo group visits Shi Isaigui. He can't believe Zhaigu gave them the cure. He then requests the next steps. Shi Asai Gu then suggests acquiring the Apu family's medicine and capturing the Corpse King, spreading its poison to make money afterward. Jiang Yifi commends his plan. Shi Asai Gu also claims that aside from the Apu family, some prominent masters will also come, including a Toist priest. On the day of the conference, various masters are observed by Jiang Yifi. Just then, Jiang Tongren calls out Liu Chen. Shen Yu Ran wonders why Liu Chen is present. Lu Chen teases her as he feels some sort of intimacy. Zhang Yifi approaches them and introduces himself to Lu Chen as Zhang Tongran's cousin. However, Lu Chen tries to ignore him. Zhang Yifi then threatens Lu Chen and Shi Yu Ran shouts at him. He leaves and tells them to take a seat. The Shi Sai Gu then starts his speech about capturing the Corpse King. He then presents Apu Zagidi as the one who can cure the Corpse King's poison. Zagidi then stands and offers her clan's help if she will handle the Corpse King later. Shi Sai Gu then shouts out that the Apu clan let the Corpse King get away in the first place. However, Zagge asks him why the Shi family's talisman is on the Corpse King. The old man gets flustered and Zagge asks for his real motive. She then tries to leave but guards block her path. Shin Yuran even notices the plan of Shi Sai Gu. Zhang Yifi gets mad and orders the guards to take Zagge hostage so they have the cure's formula. The guards attack. But there is an explosion. Lu Chen appears and claims that he got the formula. Shen Yu Ran attempts to defend Lu Chen by labeling him mentally ill. Lu Chen gets offended, but Shen Yu Ran knows how influential the Xi family is. Lu Chen tells her not to worry. A Xi family disciple tries to attack Lu Chen, but he easily knocks the disciple down, surprising everyone. Lu Chen states the various things he hates and claims that the Xi family did it all. Zhang Yufi then orders everyone to kill Lu Chen, and he will handsomely reward them. A young master from the Lu family then steps forward. He then uses his family's talisman arts to summon a god's armor. He attacks Lu Chen, and his spot explodes. 
However, they see the young master being choked by Luo Chen. Luo Chen calls their family's techniques a disappointment. Everyone gets shocked, and Zhang Yifei orders another attack, offering more rewards. Zhang Tongren tries to stop him. More masters move out and attack Luo Chen. The master of the Lu family uses a talisman to cause an explosion. He gets out, however, and discovers Lu Chen beating up the older masters. A poison master also attacks him, but Lu Chen kills the master's insects with his words. They all bring out their special moves and attack Lu Chen together. The whole place shakes due to the powers. A master attacked Lu Chen, but he dodged. Poison attacks appear, but Lu Chen neutralizes everything. He returns the poison attack to the masters. A master then attacked Lu Chen with a death formation, which disturbed Lu Chen's state of mind. The master then goes for the final attack to kill Lu Chen with a huge boulder. They are glad to finish him off and now targets again. Just then, a huge slash cuts the boulder in half in the master's arm. Everyone gets shocked when they discover Lu Chen crushing the master's head. A master tries to run off, but Lu Chen cuts his legs. Zhang Yeo Fi tries to escape, but Lu Chen confronts him. Zhang Yifei threatens Lu Chen that there is a powerful Toist that he has invited. Lu Chen then laughs at how Zhang Yifei spent an amount on inviting the Toist. Zhang Yifei is surprised that Lu Chen knows the exact amount. Lu Chen then recites how Zhang Yifei slushed the money around. Zhang Yifei asks for Lu Chen's real identity. He thought Lu Chen was a Toist, but Lu Chen calls him stupid. Zhang Yifei and Shi Asai Gu then offer help to capture the Corpse King. However, Lu Chen claims that he is not alone, and the Blood Fiend members appear. Shi Saigui asks for mercy, but Lu Chen slices him in half. Lu Chen then warns Zhang Yifei and asks Zhe Gai to lead him to the village. Later, Zhe Gai thanked Lu Chen for taking care of the Shi family. Lu Chen tells her there is no need for thanks, because killing the Shi family is also his goal. Lu Chen claims he just doesn't want the Shi family messing around while he trains the Blood Fiend corpse. Just then, Wu Kiming, the instructor from the Forest Class Armed Forces appears with a master to help capture the Corpse King. Su Hu wonders why there are only two of them. Wu Qiming claims that the master with him, Grandmaster Danba, is more than enough and is one step from becoming a god. The others are surprised, but Lu Chen finds it interesting. The old monk then warns Lu Chen to step away, because disaster will befall him. Lu Chen also tells the monk's fortune and claims that he will get bloody. The old man then threatens Lu Chen. Everyone feels the pressure. Wu Qiming laughs and leaves with the old monk. Lu Chen warns the old monk one last time about his fortune. Wai Zaiking wonders if Lu Chen's fortune telling is true and wants to try it too. Lu Chen warns him not to even try. He claims that his fortune telling is true though and tells him to wait and see. Later, the old monk summons the demon subduing Vajra and calls out the corpse king. The corpse king appears and the old monk prepares to fight. The corpse king attacks, but the old monk knocks it down to the ground. The old monk hits his exercising drums, and the corpse king is disrupted and screams out loud. Lu Chen then tells everyone to prepare. The devil observes that the old monk is winning. However, the drum gets destroyed, and the corpse king fights back, destroying the Vajra's staff. The old monk tries to retreat, and Lu Chen and the others move out. The old monk gets captured, and just when he thought he was dead, the Corpse King stops attacking. It trembles in fear upon seeing Lu Chen. The old monk wonders why the Corpse King is scared of Lu Chen. The Corpse King runs away, but Lu Chen intercepts him. The Corpse King is sent flying and tries to use its spiritual energy. However, Lu Chen sealed it off. He then kicks the Corpse King and tells the others to work quickly so they can go home. The Blood Fiend members then beat up the Corpse King. The old monk can't believe what he is seeing. Lu Chen then gives the Corpse King two choices, either die or follow him. The Corpse King immediately bows down to him. Later, the monk and Wu Kaming try to leave, but Lu Chen stops them. The old monk then thanks Lu Chen for saving him from his bloody fortune. Lu Chen then claims that he is the cause of his bloody fortune and slaps the monk. Lu Chen also tries to target Wu Kiming, but the old monk respectfully apologizes to Lu Chen. Just then, Zhang Tongren comes and claims that there is an accident. Lu Chen tells her to calm down. She claims Shen Yuran argued with Zhang Yifei and fainted on the spot. He asked about the beads and Zhang Tongren claims they broke while she was in the middle of the argument. Lu Chen did warn her before because it was a complicated curse. 
Jiang Tongran claims that an enlightened expert gave it to Shen Yuran after she lost her son. Just then, Lu Yangsu, Lu Chen's father, says that his heart is restless and he feels an uncomfortable hunch. Lu Chen then asks him if he has always used Lu Yang Shi as his name. Lu Yangshu confesses that he changed his name to avoid the Shen family. Lu Chen then asks if Shen Yuran is his mother. His father gets surprised and asks if Lu Chen met her. He then asks what happened to Shen Yuran. Lu Chen then claims that she is doing fine and will return soon. Lu Chen drops the call and gets mad as he shouts Zhang Yifei's name. Lu Chen violently flies off, and everyone is surprised. Meanwhile, the masters from the conference are arguing. Just then, Lu Chen appears and looks for Zhang Yifei. A master tries to answer, but Lu Chen obliterates him, leaving no trace at all. The young master claims that Zhang Yifei went to the Buddha door's sect. He asks for mercy, and Lu Chen cuts off his arm. Lu Chen flies off, and the young master is glad that he is spared. In the Buddha door's sect, it discusses whether to take revenge on Lu Chen or not. Just then, Lu Chen arrives and asks them to bring out Zhang Yifei. The sect leader appears and condemns Lu Chen for his intrusion. Lu Chen asks for Zhang Yifei again. The sect leader then tells him to leave. Lu Chen gets mad and confronts the sect leader. He pierces the sect leader's body, but an illusionary formation traps Lu Chen. The sect leader then gives orders to attack the immobile Lu Chen. However, the corpse king is present to help Lu Chen. The corpse king kills off the attackers, and Lu Chen wakes up. He gives them one last chance. All sect members then activate their sect's exclusive mountain array. Lu Chen tries to attack them, but a barrier is protecting them. The sect master laughs and challenges Lu Chen to break the unbreakable barrier. Lu Chen then gets serious and summons lightning, which can be seen from the nearby city. Lu Chen brings out his Grand Emperor's sword. He can only bring out a restricted version, and he apologizes to the sword. Lu Chen then attacks using the sword, and a bright line shines, destroying the barrier. Everyone in the city is surprised, and someone calls it a miracle. The sect leader tries to run away. However, Lu Chen easily kills him. The sect leader's master appears and claims to offer Zhang Yifei. However, Lu Chen plans to kill them all now. The master then attacks Lu Chen with his ultimate dragon technique. However, Lu Chen dodges everything. The master summons more dragons and attacks Lu Chen. Lu Chen feels disrespected and disintegrates the dragons. He then activates his Grand Emperor's script reflective fist and summons multiple golden dragons. He asks for Zhang Yifei again, but the master doesn't want to hand him over. The master controls the dead sect members and warns Lu Chen that the dead energy from them will be transferred to their killer. The corpse king appears and Lu Chen orders it to kill the members. Lu Chen approaches the master. The master then activates a technique. Lu Chen recognizes it as a barrier, and the master laughs at him for being inexperienced. The master then activates his final killing technique. Sinister lightning appears and Lu Chen laughs at the lightning's poor quality. Lu Chen then raises his finger and swipes off the dark clouds in the mountains. The master can't believe the technique he poured all his blood and soul into just disappeared like that. Lu Chen then shows him true lightning and calls forth one, killing the master. Lu Chen then orders the corpse king to bury the dead bodies and take over an undamaged one. Meanwhile, Zhang Yifei continues hiding until Lu Chen finds him. Outside, a body arises from the sea of corpses. It runs to the palace and sees Yifei. The kid kicks him, and Lu Chen orders the corpse king to keep an eye on Zhang Yifei. Zhang Yifei tries to let out some threats again with masters from the West Mountains, but the corpse king beats him up. Meanwhile, in the West Mountains, a general is being beaten up by a group of foreigners. Will Lu Chen fight these people from the West Mountains? If you want the next part recap of this manhua, comment down below and make sure to like this video and subscribe. Until next time,